Hi, uh, good evening everyone. Uh, Bob Reyes here. So um, we'll start in just a few, so maybe in five minutes. So just some reminders. This session is being recorded um, and the recording will be available for uh, replay by our YouTube and Facebook pages. And for tonight, we are live streaming on our Facebook page, Mozilla PH. So though this is a virtual event, uh, we would want to see uh, still to see uh, you online. So you may keep your camera on, but if you're struggling with internet connection, feel free to turn it off. Walang problema doon. Uh, for us to be able to clearly hear our speakers, we'd like you to request. Uh, we'd like to request everyone to please stay muted, unless you are encouraged to speak. Uh, you may want to use the chat box if you have questions later, or yeah, depending on how many uh, time we will have uh, left for this session. Okay. There. Cool. Sorry, we'll start in four minutes. Thank you. Okay, hey, there. Hi, good evening. Uh, Bob Reyes here of the Mozilla Philippines community. Uh, this is the Mozilla Philippines online meetup for July 2022. Maraming salamat for joining us online. Uh, we have a jam-packed uh, event for tonight and we have so many attendees. Uh, it, it's the first time this year that we have exceeded 90% um, of the capacity for our Zoom meeting. Okay, So we are so grateful for that. And for those who are joining us for the first time, maraming salamat and welcome to the Mozilla Philippines community. Um, let me just introduce what our community is doing and why we are here in the Philippines. Uh, so tonight we are we are so grateful and privileged to have Ms. Kay Alvarado. So we'll be talking about uh, she will be talking about the basics of setting up a static website in Amazon Web Services or AWS. We will also hear uh, Ems from Education PH and Ciclub Pilipinas to talk about uh, what's keeping them busy. But before that, okay, hold on.
the Mozilla started a uh, few years back, okay, um, in 1998. So we are an offshoot of Netscape Communications. Uh, and then there was a project called Mozilla.org. And then uh, which basically made the uh, source code of Netscape Communicator open and free for everyone. As a global nonprofit, Mozilla believes in these things. Okay, so we are pledging for a healthy internet. That means we are promoting an open global internet that is, we think, the most powerful communications and collabora uh, collaboration resource that we have today. Okay, and by doing so, we are committed to an internet that includes all of the peoples of the earth. That means you and me. Okay, we are also committed to an internet, sorry, committed to an internet that promotes civil discourse, human dignity, and individual expressions, as well as being committed to an internet that elevates critical thinking, reasoned argument, shared knowledge, and verifiable facts. We are committed to an internet that catalyzes collaboration among diverse com communities working together for the common good which is what the internet should be. Here in the Philippines, we started a few years back in 2009. So we are celebrating our 12th year. Uh, currently, we, our leadership is composed of four Mozilla reps, two regional coordinators, one in the Visayas and one in Mindanao, and we have four eight members. What, what's keeping us busy? Uh, we are localizing Parfax to Tagalog, Cebuano, and Hiligaynon. We are also advocating the use of free and open source uh, software, online security and privacy through social media, online events like this, and participating in lawmaking procedures. Uh, we are also creating a learning management system with contents related to localization, privacy, web development, and Rust. Okay, Mozilla is best known for our product, which is Firefox. So this is has this has been our mantra for the longest time. So we are committed to you, your privacy, and an open web. And when we talk about Firefox, we are talking about the Firefox family of products that includes the web browser, Firefox monitor. So we can tell you if your email address has been part of any breach before. And when we when we use the browser, uh, we are talking about different flavors like Nightly, Developer, and Beta. We are also available uh, for mobile, be it on Android and for iOS. And the recent, uh, the most recent update happened uh, last night. Okay, so we are currently at version 103, 103. Um, if you want more privacy and security when it comes to email, we have this product called Firefox Relay. So just go to relay.firefox.com. What, what, what it will do? You can generate an email address that will serve as a forwarder. Okay, so that you can you are not compelled in giving your real email address to people you do not trust or for to websites that you do not trust. So we are thankful for our friends of Mozilla. Okay, so we have uh, several of our friends like upper.ph for hosting and for sponsoring our Zoom. Uh, and we have tonight we are um working with our friends from AWS Club, education.ph, for to host events like this and to give awesome content to our community members. So how to join the Mozilla PH uh, community? Very simple. Just go to join.mozillaph.org. There's a sign-up form there. Um, just fill up that form and we will include you to the mailing list so that you will be abreast with what's happening with the community. Uh, we need people from all walks of life, not 
only developers, not only designers, not only programmers, etc. So we need people to use and test our products. By doing so, you help us improve Firefox and other uh, products that we have. We need people to spread the word about free and open source software and online privacy. We also need people who are willing to help us localize Mozilla products and websites. To Right now, we have uh, localization efforts in Tagalog, Cebuano, and Hiligaynon. And we are also looking for people who are willing to learn and to be trained in helping other people become web literate. Okay, Just simply being awesome online means a lot to us. Where to get in touch with us? Uh, we are active on social media. Uh, but if you wish to know where we where to find us, go, just go to linktree slash Mozilla PH. All of the links are there. Okay. So we are active on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram uh, as our main touch points. But if you want to chat with us, feel free to send us an email via info at mozillaphilippines.org or chat with us via chat.mozilla.org and look for the Mozilla Philippines chat room. If you wish to chat with our engineers, they're also there. They're active. Okay. Ibalang ang time zone. Uh, updates and announcements. Um, right now, MDN Plus is already available in selected countries. Uh, you can check it out by hacks.mozilla.org. So if you are uh, if you know Mozilla Developer Network, there's a plus version right now. So it's more of the de facto documentation when it comes to web development. We also release our vision for the evolution of the web. So you may want to check it out via webvision.mozilla.org. Uh, we will soon be conducting a Rust 101 session for absolute newbies. If you know how to program in Rust and would want to help us, feel free to get in touch with me or through the community leadership. Uh, and then, yeah, we have ongoing localization projects as I mentioned earlier. There is also a free online course uh, hosted by the Foundations of Humane Technology. So we recently partnered with them uh, so that sila yung gumawa nung if you are a Netflix user uh, or subscriber. So there's a documentary called Social Dilemma. Sila yun, si Center for Human Technology. So we partnered with them. You can take the online course at, uh, during your free time and basically it will new learnings on how uh, how on on how you can adopt and apply humane technology with your daily lives and now i will be turning over the digital floor the virtual floor to ems okay stop sharing there hi ems are you there Hello, hello, Bob. As your Bob, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul, for your uh, for letting us uh, uh, have a few minutes for you to introduce AWS Sick Lab Filipinas. So yeah, so here, um, AWS Sick Lab Filipinas is both a product of Education PH and Amazon Web Services. So, uh, to give lang a uh, a brief introduction about Education PH. So, uh, Education PH is the largest ed tech platform in the Philippines. So. Um, goal nito is to empower millions of Gen Z students aged 13 to 24 to make self-aware education decisions that lead to a fulfilling career and life. So with that, uh, ginagawa ni Education PH is we partner with schools, with organizations, corporations, and foundations para mag-reach out sa mga student communities and with AWS Sit Lab Pilipinas, developer communities naman along the journey from education to career. Yeah, so uh, with that, uh, kami naman, uh, we're from, uh, yung specific na uh, uh, ginagawa namin is with AWS Ciclab Pilipinas. So uh, Amazon Web Services Ciclab Pilipinas brings people to uplift fellow developers and professionals in the Philippines. So what we do is we partner with um with different uh, developer organizations para mag-co-host ng mga event katulad nito. So if you've been to our social media sites or if um na nabisita niyo na by any chance uh we conduct webinars, boot camps and other na events na will help people to upskill in technology. 
Yeah, so yeah, easy, very easy lang naman to join our community. So, uh, scan nyo lang yung QR code and then makikita nyo yung uh, socials namin. Nandiyan yung Facebook and everything, Instagram, TikTok, and then uh, join the Facebook group uh, to stay updated then sa mga events namin. So, uh, as mentioned earlier, we have um, bootcamp. So, if familiar kayo, we recently had yung mga cloud practitioner bootcamp, solutions architect bootcamps. Yeah, and what's good with this is that everything is free so libre siya lahat all you have to do is to join and to syempre register ayon and then aside from the bootcamp syempre um alam naman namin na uh, mayroong iba na need na parang mga short tech sessions lang. So, um, we also have Community Ignite series and other tech sessions na uh, mga short lang siya, mga one hour, two hour events like this one with Mozilla PH na ano siya, it comes with three e-certificates. And also, lastly na lang siguro to plug din, no? Uh, to plug then uh, AWS Club Pilipinas we're already hosting some face-to-face -face events so ayan uh, visit kayo sa Facebook page naman we have uh, upcoming face-to-face -face events this August and then uh, when you come uh, kahit sa mga online you'll be receiving then free e-certificates and merchandise so yeah uh, that's all lang naman from AWS Club Pilipinas thank you po yes maraming salamat Ems okay uh, so that is Ems from AWS Club Pilipinas. So and for tonight, so our main event, our main guest, okay. So I'll, I will let her introduce herself. Okay, so hold on, I'll just switch. So we are also live streaming on the Mozilla Philippines uh, Facebook page right now. So good evening, good morning, good afternoon sa lahat ng nakikinig at nanonood. Uh, especially those sa mga nasa loob ng Zoom. Uh, we are, what, 33 right now inside the Zoom. And we have participants from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, even from North America. So there, we, we have a Mozillian from North America joining us tonight. Okay. So without further ado, uh, I will let Kay Alvarado, a 4X AWS Certified Engineer, uh, I will hand over the virtual floor to her and for her to start her Discussion about how to create static websites in AWS. Magandang gabi, Kay. Hi, Bob. Thank you for the <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Maraming salamat din for, for ano, gracing our online meetup tonight. No worries. Okay, so I guess uh, I'll start. Sure, sure. Sige, the floor is yours. Uh, okay. So... Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Kay, and I'm a senior DevOps engineer and AWS community builder and a core member of AWS UG Builders Plus. So itong group na to is relatively new AWS user group that focuses on diversity and inclusion in the Philippine uh, AWS communities. So thank you, Mozilla Philippines, uh, uh, education.ph and AWS Club Pilipinas for organizing this event. Um, like I always say, I appreciate the efforts of these IT communities in the Philippines who organize meetups like this to share knowledge free for everyone. And I hope you learn something from me today and hopefully in the future you'll also volunteer to share the knowledge to others, especially students who are uh, going to pursue a career in IT. And so um, this is basics of setting up a static website in AWS. Uh, it's it, it says basic because the uh, topic is yung um, S3 storage, it's always the first thing and easiest topic to learn if you want to explore AWS. And uh, I didn't prepare much slides for this presentation, but um, I recently wrote uh, an article about this and I'll walk you through that and show you a quick demo. Ayun. And also later, I'll share the GitHub project I put up for this demo so that you can work through it on your own. Okay, so um, just an overview of this topic. So I have this uh, link in AWS. It's, uh, it's an article on how to manually set up a website with an S3 architecture. And I previously gave a talk about this back in March, also under one of the meetups organized by Ciclab Pilipinas, which is yung more co comprehensive uh, manual setup ng um, static website hosting. So it's also uploaded uploaded in YouTube if you want to follow that one. So uh, running through the flow of the discussion for today, it, it will be slightly different. 
So first, we'll define what a static website is and what is infrastructure as code. So uh, since I'm DevOps, gusto ko rin um, i-share yung knowledge about uh, setting up an infrastructure with code. And yan. So ano ba yung architecture ng ibibuild natin? And then we'll proceed with a demo. Ano yung prerequisites and setup? And then I'll show you the Terraform code of the infrastructure. And then we'll upload the static website in S3. And then I'll also show the pipeline development with GitHub action. So messy ICD uh, part then dun. Um, of course, in, in a DevOps world, uh, you'd want yung um, continuous deployment. So every time you push changes to the static website, it gets deployed to um, wherever you want it to be. So in this case, in S3. Um, yeah, so just in case you're not yet aware, I attached here a screenshot of a game called Cloud Quest. So it's available uh, via explore.skillbuilders.aws. And it's actually an RPG that you can play while learning AWS. And yung first quest dito is about static websites. So do check that out if you want to learn AWS while playing an RPG. Yeah, so going to the definition. So static websites are nothing but a collection of lightweight static files. So static files, this can be HTML, CSS, JavaScript, image files. And these are served by a host to the web browser or the client accessing the site exactly as they are stored. So regardless if user one tries to access the homepage of the site, so kunyari yung index.html, and user two tries to access the same, they will get exactly the same content. And it's static. So it does not change with any conditions as opposed to a dynamic website, which can differ from user to user. Ayan. So next, ayan. so what is infrastructure as code? Uh, infrastructure as code I, uh, tools allow you to manage infrastructure with config files rather, rather than through a graphical user interface. So hindi, hindi siya manual. Uh, it's by code that you get to deploy the infrastructure. And IAC allows you to build, change, and manage your infrastructure in a safe, consistent, and repeatable way by defining resource configurations that you can version, reuse, and share. Yan. So, yan yung um, HashiCorp's definition. Uh, in the DevOps world, one IAC tool yun is yung Terraform, which is what I'll show you today. And I won't define kung ano yung Terraform, but hopefully once I walk you through, you'll get a gist of what it is and what are its benefits. Ayan. So let's go to the architecture we are trying to build. So pinaka basic um, architecture of a static website is uh, using these three services in uh, AWS. Ayan. Uh, sorry, din rowing ko lang siya. Hindi ko hindi ko ano para ano mas ma mas madali ma envision. So um, we have here an S3 bucket, a cloud front and route 53, and traffic flows uh, that way. Ayan. So, and dito yung mga static files, cloud front and then route 53. So, going through the services, S3, this is the main component of all the AWS services, which is basically a storage service. So, storage lang siya. It provides the capability to host the static files needed for the website. It can also provide security in accessing those files. It can also configure error handling. So, kunyari, um, the client is trying to access a file that's not there. So, yung mga 404s or kapag may mga server errors, you can handle that in S3 as well. So, you can configure error handling and provide an endpoint for the landing page. So, kung um, actually, kahit yung S3 bucket lang, pwede na siyang website talaga. Although yung end uh, meron na siyang endpoint na ipoprovide, although parang ano siya, um, Amazon, may Amazon sa domain. So, you'd want to set up these two other services kung gusto mong complete yung static website. Now, CloudFront, it's another AWS service. service. So, it's a low latency content delivery network or CDN. So, ito yung CDN service ng AWS. It can provide caching to the files being accessed by clients across different locations. So if you're familiar with the AWS architecture, uh, basically, um, instead of kunyari, um, when you're accessing a site, you don't always go to the S3 bucket because yung S3 bucket, where the files are, it can be anywhere. So global, global, ano siya, meron siyang redundancy and it can be anywhere. So 
to reduce yung um, latency when you're accessing the website uh, in introduce yung CloudFront. So CloudFront essentially is putting the cache in the edge location or somewhere nearer to you so that when you access the website, um, the request doesn't have to go to the back end. If it's available in, you can access it already there. Ayan. And next is the Route 53. Ito naman is another AWS service. It's the domain name uh, service of AWS that can also provide uh, routing policies as needed. So for this demo, uh, we'll use the um, www.codeninja.link, which is uh, the demo DNS that I created. And to ensure that the website is secure, um, para hindi nagagalaw ng anyone yung files na as S3 bucket, I, you can also set up an IAM user to restrict, to restrict right access to the bucket. So ideally, you'd want to make it secure and you don't want uh, the public to access your S3 bucket. Um, kahit, na kahit sino lang. Ayun. Um, ayun. So, so far, we discussed about for AWS services, aside from these three, yung IAM or Ident Identity Access Manager uh, service of AWS, which is basically sa roles and users. Ayun. And last, eh, na another service that we'll explore is the ACM, uh, AWS uh, Certificate Manager. So do naman if you want your website to have uh, HTTPS access. So you issue a TLS public certificate and attach it uh, within the service, uh, within, within CloudFront so that uh, anyone accessing your site, they can use the HTTPS. And you can also uh, redirect yung HTTP to HTTPS para secure yung ano, SSL connection. Ayan. So I'll stop sharing this and go to the article. Give me a second. Ayan. So, this is uh, written in that tool for AWS Community Builders. And I'll, I think I'll uh, maybe paste the link as well in the Zoom para ma-access ng anyone uh, later. Ah, sige, later na lang. Ayun. So, ayan. So far, we had the introduction about the architecture. So, um, going through, we'll build it in Terraform. So, ano ba yung prerequisites for this demo? So, we have, uh, we need to have Terraform, which is the IAC tool as discussed. We also need uh, AWS CLI. Um, basically, when you put up services in AWS, you can do it two ways. You can do it either on the management console, which is yung graphical user interface ng AWS, and you can also do it by a command line. So, gagamit tayo ng command line. So, yun yung AWS CLI. So, meron siyang mga link na nilagay ko dito. So, uh, you can go through here. Um, you can find uh, getting started page. Uh, pretty comprehensive siya sa HashiCorp for Terraform, and sa same thing with AWS CLI, ano ba yun, how to install it. Ayan. And of course, you also need, um, kapag gagamit ka ng AWS CLI, you also need an AWS account and credentials that has access to create the AWS resources. Ayan. So later, I'll walk you through that. Uh, first, let's uh, walk through the Terraform setup. Ayan. So, andito naman yung details, how I did it. Um, since I'm on a Windows machine, um, I downloaded a binary package, which is also provided by the Terraform website here. Then, unzip the package and copy yung executable file anywhere in your PC. So, for my case, I copied it in my uh, program files Terraform folder. Then, um, normally for developers, you also need to, you, you'd also be, exposed dun sa path variable. So it's an advanced uh, environment variable in your PC. And you, you can set that up in your control panel. Ayan. Nakalagay naman dito. Ayan. So siguro i-echo natin para makita nyo. So 
the path variable uh, contains yung mga programs mo na you want to configure and uh, basically you need to set this up to in, to be included in your path bar path variable para lumabas yung para properly install yung terraform yan and how do you know if you properly installed terraform so normally um to check mo lang yung version so ito yung command na usually ginagamit yung terraform command and then um dash dash version to check the version and it will normally give you out this um response so you know that terraform is properly installed and and then next is the AWS CLI. Ito naman, um, there's a link here for AWS how to install it. So pretty much the same. Um, difference here for Windows machine, pag Mac or Linux machine, mas madali kasi via command line yung installation. For Windows, it's an MSI package. Um, basically yung wizard type siya that you can install into your machine. So uh, previously installed ko na siya and to check as well you can also use the command line to run the, AW, the AWS uh, version command to know if you have set it up properly. Yan. So may response rin siya kung anong version ng CLI yung naka-install sa'yo. And, and lastly oops move natin ito um AWS account and credentials. So you need uh, to create an IAM user that has required access to create yung resources. So uh, we knocked through rin yun dun sa video um, on the previous talk that I did. Uh, but maybe to show you quickly, put it tayo sa management console ng AWS. So I did it via the, the console here. And... Yan. So, the management console dito mo makikita lahat ng AWS resources. And under IAM, you can create a user that has um, access to create resources. So, for users, I created the AWS CLI. So, normally, click mo lang yung add users and it will present you with a wizard on how to do that. And for this user, I... Ayan. Ang inattach kong policy uh, to keep it simple is admin access, which is basically um, lahat lahat ng uh, rights meron siya. Uh, pero for uh, advice na for you want to keep it secure, you can define a, uh, specific policies or you can attach specific policies to your user. So kung ano lang, meron kasing least, least privilege na tinatawag to make it secure. So kung ano lang yung kailangan niyang rights, yun lang ipoprovide mo. So, usually, meron naman siya sa AWS. Uh, for example, nag add ka ng permission and you select this uh, in the wizard, attach existing policies. Meron ng pinrovide si AWS na for your selection. So, for example, gusto mo is related to S3 lang yung policy na i-attach mo sa kanya. Uh, you can just do a search and it will give you all these options kung ano yung commonly uh, usage na policies na pwede mong i-attach. So, for example, gusto mo full access to S3. So, it doesn't, kung ito lang in-attach mo, hindi yung admin access, it only has access to everything S3. It doesn't have other access to the other AWS services. Yeah. So, uh, when you complete this wizard, it will uh, provide you with uh, two things that you need to configure for your CLI. So, ayan. so, for example, meron ka na, na provide si AWS na nung dalawa na yun, yung uh, it's basically uh, ayan, ito. A AWS Access Key ID and Secret Access Key. So, parang token siya. And you can configure your environment by running the following command, which is AWS Configure. So, sa CLI command mo rin siya irarun and it will ask you these things. So, it will ask you yung key ID, which you will input, secret access key, input mo rin. Uh, default region name kung saan ka usually nagpo-provision ng resources. So for my usage, I was using AP Southeast 1. Then default output output format is none. And 
once you've configured your user, you should now be able to connect to AWS. And how do you test that? Uh, you can run any command actually for AWS CLI, pero um, one suggestion is to use the STS get caller identity command. Um, STS uh, secure token service of AWS, which basically um, related siya sa mga user or sa token. Ayan. So itong uh, call na to, it will give you back um, this response, which is um, ano yung current user na nakakonfigure sa'yo. So it, if you can see here, it will also provide you yung ARN or yung ID ng user na nakreate mo dun sa console. So usually, um, any resource of AWS is identified by a, an ARN Yan. or Amazon resource name, I think yung um, ano niya, ibig sabihin. And parang ID siya on the, use, on the resource that you're creating in AWS. Yun. So you're all good with AWS CLI. You're, you can already connect to AWS with your uh, local machine. Now, let's go through the Terraform code. So, yeah, nilink ko rin yung repo rito in my uh, GitHub repository. Uh, it's called Terraform Stuff. Yeah, so, I'll walk you through that. Um, there, I also put here a link kung hindi ka pa familiar with Terraform. Since Terraform is, ano, um, ito yung gagamitin nating infrastructure as code na tool. Um, it's very easy to learn, actually. Since as... I discussed masyadong comprehensive yung um, documentation for this. So, kunyari, gusto mong mag-create ng S3 bucket, uh, isa-search mo lang dun sa website niya. A ano ba yung um, mag-type ka lang, S3 Terraform. It will already provide you with kung ano yung i-create. Yung i-copy-paste mo na code dun sa gagawin mong uh, infrastructure. Code. So, ayan. Pinaprovide na niya yung uh, basic sample that you need. So, um, let's go through that in here in the code. So, ito yung code ng IAC. Hope you can see it. Um, yan. So, siguro I I'll walk you through how, um, how this is. So, usually merong main file. Uh, in this case, it's staticwebsite.tf. And uh, ano ba yung mga nakalagay dito? Uh, you're saying the provider, which is AWS. It can also be, uh, Terraform also supports the other cloud services like GCP, uh, Google Cloud, or yung Azure. Uh, for this usage, uh, the provider I use is AWS. And then Terraform, uh, you can also define a state file. So since uh, code nga siya, it saves the configuration in a state file para alam niya kung ano yung configure at any given point in time. Um, every time you run yung Terraform code, nasa save siya or na-overwrite dun sa, um, sa, sa TF state na file na yun. So, it's required here that you also have an S3 bucket. Uh, normally, you, you store that state file in an, in an S3 bucket. So, yun. Nakalagay siya dito. So, before I run this code, I also... Uh, let's go back to IAM. That to... Uh, management console, here is S3. So I created this manually, yung uh, storage ng uh, Terraform state file. Under buckets, so it's here. Uh, Terraform states. So every time you run anything, basically, nasa save dito. Um, TF state parang JSON file format lang siya yung itsura niya. Ayan. And then, ayan, ito na, yung actual code mo for Terraform. Uh, module, uh, module-based siya. So you can group, you can put the whole code here, pero para mas organized, I put it in modules. Um, you can group it any way you want. Uh, for my usage, I put here, I separated it by service. So, um, if you remember the architecture, we're trying to build uh, CloudFront and then S3. Um, so you can put the code for CloudFront in a particular folder para nakagroup siya together. And you also have S3 here and S3 policy. 
um, at the moment, kinoment out ko yung CloudFront kasi nagkaka-issue ako with my um, certificate. So, for now, yung Terraform code na makikita nyo sa GitHub repo is just building yung S3 along with the policy. Or yung policy ng S3 or yung access dun sa S3 bucket. Ayan. Um, maybe let's go through kahit yung S3, ano lang. S3 module. So, ayan. Parang, ano, ano siya, YAML format na may pag, ano, JSON pala to. Uh, you, it can also be um, in YAML. Ayan. Uh, basically, kung ano yung mga gusto mong configuration for your S3 bucket, dito mo i-define. As I've said, kinapi lang siya from the Terraform code dun sa Terraform website, then paste it here. Tapos, you just configure different things. Like, for example, you want to add a tag. Um, you want to configure yung, kung titignan mo kasi yung S3, ganito siya. So, meron siyang mga different properties here that you can configure based on what you want it to be. So, uh, for example, dito, ito pala yung binibuild ko, hindi ito, ito. Ito yung storage natin for the actual website. Ayan. So you can, uh, for, for this bucket, I configured it with permissions. So makikita mo dyan, naka-block all public access. So yun yung example ng something that you can configure in the code. So you can set it to false depending on your usage. And ayan, ganun lang siya. And yung ST policy naman, dito ko nilist kung ano yung pwedeng mag-access sa kanya. So to keep it secure, normally, you only want your cloud front to be the only thing that can access yung S3. Kasi like I said, S3 can also be accessed publicly. So paano yun ginagawa? Meron kasi ditong um, domain na agad na pinoprovide si si, ano, si AWS. So kahit ito mismo yung i-access mo, since I configured this with permission, you'll see a 403 here. Pero if you don't want to set up any any domain, you can actually set up your website na ito yung domain na gagamitin niya and then makikita mo na yung website dito. But since I configured it with permissions, makikita mo forbidden siya. And this is the recommended and secure way on how to do it. Ayan. And in terms of permissions, like I said, you only want CloudFront to be the only resource to access your S3 bucket. And here, I also added an IAM user. Um, I created an IAM role uh, called S3 read, which uh, I'll use later on in the latter part of the presentation for the CICD deployment of the static website. Uh, basically, ang inad kong write sa kanya is to put object or um, maglagay ng any, any files dito sa bucket na to. It can also show yung uh, list yung bucket and also get yung files dun sa object, dun sa bucket. So, ito yung uh, IAM role. I think I cre also created it in IAM manually. Um, ayan, maraming manual akong ginawa for, for this to set it up. So, let's go back to IAM service. You can find it here. Uh, since this is uh, an AWS service, there, you can also create a Terraform code for it. So kung ayaw mo siyang gawing manually, you can also write it in code. So ito yung role na kinreate ko for uh, this usage. And the writes that I did is it has full access for the Amazon S3 and also CloudFront full access. Ayun. So that's it. Um, that's it for the code. So how do you run this code? Ayan. Um, like I said, you already have um, you already have uh, set up your Terraform code. So yung naalala nyo yung Terraform version na run natin kanina to ensure that Terraform is installed. Um, to run this code, um, meron tayong three commands na i-run, which first one is Terraform in init or initialize. So basically, this command um, installs yung, ayan, creates a dot .terraform lock file and also yung dot .terraform na folder. 
yan. So, andito rin yung Terraform state file na i-upload niya dun sa S3 back- backend mo. So, parang pini-prepare niya lang kung ano yung mga kailangan mo. Depende dun sa code mo. So, for example, I'm creating an S3. It will uh, download everything needed to create that in AWS. And the next command is Terraform plan. So, itong Terraform plan, basically, anything if anything changes in your code, so kung hindi ko pa nararun yung code, it will show me ano yung mga resources that it will create based on the code that I have here. So since I already run this, it should show zero when I run Terraform plan. Ah, medyo matagal siya. Maybe let's scroll up here. Ayan. So ganito yung, nung niran ko siya kanina. Ayan. Nag-run na pala. Ayan. So, Since naran ko na siya kanina, so it didn't detect any changes. And so sabi niya no changes kasi yung infrastructure na naka-deploy ngayon already matches the configuration. But maybe let's try to change something like um, yung name nung uh, name ng configuration. So itong bars na lang. Lagyan ko siya ng change ko yung ano, yung tag So, yun. Um, kanina yung category is static website demo 1. So, if you go back to my console, makikita mo meron ditong tags. Ayan, static website demo 1. And I just changed it in code to be to remove yung 1. So, save that. And kapag niran ko ngayon yung Terraform plan, it should detect that. Um, the next code that I'll run pala yung Terraform apply, it also runs yung Terraform plan. But on, on top of that, it also uh, gives you the option. It asks you kung ia-apply mo na rin ba siya right after seeing the plan. So run the Terraform apply. Parang basically, yun nga, ira-run niya ulit yung Terraform plan. Since I made a change here, it should detect that. And medyo matagal lang siya. Yun, nag na siya. And, ayan. So, sasabihin dito ni Terraform yung plan, which is, it detected na I changed yung category, which is static website demo 1 to static website demo. And it will ask you, do you want to apply this change? If you say yes, it will start to run that code. And kapag na-complete na to, you should uh, see that reflect already in the AWS Management Console. Ayun, yan. So, apply complete. Let's check here. Siguro if refresh natin para mag-reflect uh, siya. Ayan. So, it already reflected the change here. So, makikita mo, you don't have to do it manually if you have that code. So, in the DevOps world, ganun yung practice na ginagawa lagi. Ito yung manual way. You can do it by the console. Pero it's not the recommended way because... Um, as developers, we want everything to be automated. And also, pag, may benefit kasi kapag nasa configuration siya, you always know, uh, parang mas madali siyang matignan na uh, ano yung nakakonfigure ngayon, you just look at the configuration code. Ayan. So that's that. Um, let's go back to this. Ayan. So naran na natin yung infrastructure. It built the S3 bucket and the policy. And ayan, I added the note here that the Terraform code only builds that. Um, the other things are the CloudFront and Route 53. I built it manually, as I said. Hindi ko na siya ma-walkthrough kasi naggawa ko na siya manually. Pero siguro pakita ko na lang din siya sa console. So go to CloudFront service. Um If you're doing it by a management console, mapapansin mo puro wizard siya. Uh, click mo lang yung create distribution. But this is the distribution that I've created. And it gives this domain name. So pwede mo ring i-access yung website with this domain name. And it's also linked to a domain name, which is yung codeninja.link. And if you click on this one, makikita mo sa origins naman, dito naka-define kung anong uh, S3 bucket siya naka Uh, yung origin na nakaset up sa kanya. So, it's um, referring to this bucket for the website. 
Ayan. So that's how CloudFront is connected with S3. Now, we also have dun sa architecture yung Route 53. Siguro go back to the architecture na lang. Ayan. So ito, ito na yung S3 bucket, CloudFront, and we also have yung domain, yung Route 53. So let's go to that service. This is where you can buy your domain. Uh, you can do it also externally, pero uh, for for me, I think if, if you do it in AWS lahat, mas uh, easier siya to track. So here is my registered domain. And codeninja.link in hosted zone. Dito mo makikita yung uh, traffic routing ng domain. So let's go to codeninja.link. Um, I added a record here for C name or uh, canonical name, which basically itong record na to points to the CloudFront distribution. So ito yung pinaprovided sa CloudFront kanina. Yun. So yun lang yung uh, what you need to do to uh, to set up that full infrastructure. Ngayon, um, you can uh, what I did here is also up uploaded manually yung index.html file dun sa S3 bucket. So let's go back to S3. Meron ako in-upload na index.html na hello world lang yung laman. So kung makikita mo siya, let's try to access the website directly. So that's www.codeninja.link. Ayun. So makikita mo, ito lang yung laman nung index.html file ko, hello world. Ayan. So that's it. That's for the static website. Now, last part is, ayan, so Terraform code to build the infrastructure. Now, ayan, dito ko pala define yung uploading a static website. Like I said, may index.html file. You can upload it in S3 manually via the management console. So, nandun na index.html and to test that, go, just go to the domain and you'll see the the index.html load up here. Now, um, I also developed a pipeline for my website para any changes I do in the code automatically deploys to S3 and magre-reflect na rin siya dun sa website ko. So, how I did this, um, I uploaded my static website repository in GitHub as well. So, dito mo rin siya makikita in my projects sa GitHub. It's under... Um, code Ninja. Ito. Okay, so, ayan, ito siya. Ito yung project. And, ayan, basically, yung GitHub, it already provides yung GitHub Actions. So, GitHub Actions yung CICD feature ng GitHub. And, there's a uh, GitHub Actions marketplace that allows you to easily set up yung CICD pipeline of your static website. So meron ng ayan, may pinrovide na si GitHub na ganun na sample workflow. So follow nyo lang to kung paano yun sine set up. I I provided the link here in the article. Yan. So ito yung setup nung identity provider. Kasi um if you're familiar with how GitHub Actions run, uh, basically meron siyang GitHub runner na pino provision and uh, it's ano siya parang environment that can run things uh, to another host so um, you need to set up an, a user in that runner so kung nakita nyo kanina nag set up tayo ng AWS CLI we had to set up an IAM user at the same time kapag GitHub runner kailangan meron din siyang user to access yung AWS so ito siya how you set it up you you need you basically need an open id connect uh, identity provider to do that and i put here the steps on how to do that um yan basically yung iam na user natin kanina you you have to put a trust relationship there with the details dun nung oidc mo nung open id connect mo na na set up So, pakita ko na lang siya kung paano siya yung itsura niya. So, ito. Ito yung uh, sinasabi kong IAM uh, user. IA, IAM role pala siya. And in the trust relationship, you can see here, I added this part. 
which basically provides a token action to GitHub. Ayan. And I also defined here anong GitHub uh, repo yung uh, poprovide ng access ni AWS. Ayan. Ayan. Okay, so let's run through yung code ng pipeline. So ito siya, Code Ninja. Ayan. So you can also see here, ito yung code ko for my static website. So ito yung mga files na andun din sa S3. And the workflow looks something like this. So YAML file siya. Um, ano lang siya, parang workflow lang. Um, here I have the name. This is the static website pipeline. It will run every time I push something in my branch, in my main branch in GitHub. It can also allow me to run this workflow manually from the Actions tab. So, paano yun? Um, if you go here in the GitHub Actions, meron siyang option to, to run it manually. Ayan, meron siyang, ayan. It, basically, ito siya. Parang you can man, run it manually via this, um, via the GUI. Ayan. So, ito yung workflow dispatch. Tapos ito yung mga iraran niyang uh, jobs. And so first, uh, it, ito yung GitHub runner, Ubuntu latest, and ano yung permissions na kailangan niya. So first step, it will check out the code. So ito yung code ng static website. And then it will configure your AWS credentials. Um, here is the role to assume. So S3 read, like I said, ito yung may access dun sa AWS from the GitHub runner. Ito yung up mo kanina with OIDC, OIDC or Open ID Connect. Ayan. And then, ito, basically, these are uh, CLI commands, AWS CLI commands. So, so parang niran mo rin siya locally, pero here, you're running it via, uh, via the pipeline. So, ano yung mga command na i-run? So, AWS, then anong service, S3, and sync. So, ito yung i-run mo, sync yung static website folder. So, ito yung source and you want to upload that to your S3 bucket which is this this one, case static website. Um, next command naman is AWS CloudFront. Um, ito kasi, since CloudFront diba, is nakakash siya. So, every time you do any changes before it reflects on the actual website, you have to invalidate the cache. So what it does is basically kiniclear niya yung cache dun sa cloud front. And since wala nang nakakache dun sa cloud front, the next time a user requests something from the website, it will pull it to the internet and put it in the cloud front. Ayun. So para ano siya, para parang clear cache mo from the browser din. So ayun siya. So ang ang syntax ng command is AWS then cloud front create an invalidation with the distribution ID. Um, ano yung CloudFront ID? Ito yun. D distribution ID siya. And then, ano yung mga i-clear mo na, na cache? Ito yung code para lahat ng naka-store dun sa CloudFront is uh, cleared. So, naka-ano lang siya. Wildcard symbol na. Ayun. So, that's it. Napaka-basic lang nung, ano, nung, nung command. So, maybe let's try... Um, I added a change here. So, kung naalala nyo yung index.html ko is very simple. Ano lang siya? Uh, hello world. Ano lang siya? Hello world message lang siya. So, this time, let's upload something. Um, I have here a simple uh, index.html page with a picture code ninja.jpg tapos i-upload din yung .jpg file here. So, ito yung makikita mo dun sa website dapat. So, maybe let's run yung mga GitHub commands. Um, so, if you see, git pala, git, git status. So, ano mga nag-change na file? Ah, ano, nasa iba kong repo. Okay. Git status, ano yung mga nag-change na file? So here I modified yung index.html file and also added yung code ninja.jpg. So add ko lahat ng nag-change ng file na yon. Git add all and then git commit this with a message um, change my website. 
and then push that. Yeah. So now, since I pushed something in my GitHub repo, makikita mo magraran tong deploy that YAML file. Here. Yeah, nagraran na siya. Since the trigger for the pipeline is yung push. So, yan, magraran yung mga yung code i si set up niya yan with sa S3 end. So tapos na. So, let's check in S3 what happened. Dapat makita ko na dito yung na-push na code. Ayun. So na-upload na yung JPEG file and the index.html also changed um, as of now. Ayan. And maybe let's see in an incognito kung ano yung itsura niya ngayon. Hope I did it correctly. Ayun. So the static website is uploaded with the new um, the new change in index.html. Ayun. So as you see, um, we have set up the static website and also the pipeline for it. And yeah, that's it. Um, I linked my GitHub workflow project here if you want to clone and create that um, or explore that further for your liking. Ayan. So. Here, I... sige. Salamat kay. Okay, so I uh, will be, hold on. Uh, hmm, where is that? So for, for those who have questions, uh, if you are on the live stream, you may use the chat box or, or the comment box. If you are here on uh, Zoom, feel free to use the chat box uh, for your questions. So first question meron dito galing kay Joffrey. Uh, ano daw ang pinagkaiba ng paggamit ng Terraform sa AWS at AWS CloudFormation? Hmm. Okay, so Terraform also creates cloud formation sa backend. Um, I guess cloud formation yung infrastructure as code ng, na pinaprovide na service ng AWS. Uh, it's basically has the same purpose. Siguro kung mas familiar ka with cloud formation, you can also use that. Um, wala siya masyadong difference actually. <laughs> um, siguro yung Terraform kasi mas mas wide yung cover niya. Um, it can also be used sa different things, hindi lang sa AWS. Um, yung cloud formation focused mostly on AWS lang talaga. But basically, same purpose sila. It's infrastructure as code. Awesome. Okay. Uh, ako may personal akong tanong. Uh, what the call this? What? How much will you spend? Pagka, let's say, I, I want to have my static website running on that particular ano, scenario na pinakita mo. Mga magkano yung budget na kailangan ko? Okay, hindi ko na-check. Pero um, actually, sa AWS kasi, merong tinatawag na free tier. Um, usually, pag first two, year, first two years ng account mo, you have a lot of free stuff to use different services ng AWS. And isa dun yung um, sa S3 bucket, I believe marami, basta meron siyang free. Eh. Hindi ko na masyadong memorize kung ano yung free sa kanya. Um, ang pinaka-costly dun sa sinetup ko ngayon is yung domain name, yung codeninja.link kasi pinapurchase siya outside it of AWS. So, depende dun, dun uh, you have, uh, usually ang .com website is around $12 for one year. And yung S3 bucket, um, very cheap ang S3. Hindi ko alam exactly. Pero merong AWS calculator. Um, you can put different services there. How how long you'll use the service and how much traffic you're expecting. Depende. Kasi iba-iba per service ang costing niya. So, pwedeng ilagay mo dun lahat ng mga services na ano gagamitin mo. And then, AWS will put an assessment cost for you. Yun. Yeah, mura yung S3 kasi ako I use it for backup. Eh. <laughs> mura lang. A, ano, something like a 50 gig backup, parang monthly binabayaran ko lang mga 4 dollars so it's like 100 yeah. to 50 pesos. So, yeah, na dollars just depende sa foreign exchange. Pagka nag tumaas yung foreign exchange, medyo yari tayo pero okay lang, at least mura pa rin siya. Tsaka merong storage, uh, different storage types ang S3. So kapag hindi mo siya frequently in-access, mas cheaper pa yun. So may mga ganong options ka rin. 
Actually, yun, yun. Kaya siguro mababa yung single nila sa akin kasi hindi naman siya nag-a- <laughs> <laughs> nag-alaw. Okay. So, um, isa, may tanong dito si Sir Willie Pastil. So, is there a difference between Terraform and Ansible modules? Which would be best suited for provisioning? Mm, okay. Uh, very minimal yung uh, familiarity ko with Ansible. Pero ang usage ko kasi with Ansible is more on configuration deployment rather than with infrastructure deployment. So configuration deployment, meaning nakadeploy na yung infrastructure and meron ka lang binabagong things doon like kunyari yung mga naka-install na files doon, you do it via Ansible. Hindi ako familiar masyado kung ano yung uh, particular. Uh, pero usually, ganun ko ginagamit yung Ansible eh. Terraform naman, more on yung pag-build up talaga ng infrastructure. So, ang uh, main benefit ng Terraform, for example, um, nag-deploy ka sa isang AWS account, you want the same infrastructure deployed in another AWS account. So, you can use the same code for that. Ganun. Okay. Tama ba yung pagkakaintindi ko? Kasi ako, I haven't used Terraform. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, tama ba yun na para siyang, if you are into mobile web development or web development, para siyang, um, uh, anong tawag doon? Siya yung manif- manifest file? Mm, yeah. It's almost the same. Cool. Yun. So, parang ang gumawa. Tapos, kasi diba yung gagamitin yung template if you're going to move elsewhere. Eh? So, basically, it's the same. Yep. Cool. Um, apaw- sino pa may tanong? <laughs> Hindi, hindi. Uh, eto. May tanong ulit si Joffrey. So, what course or other learning resource po would you recommend to learn uh, what's this? IAC with Terraform. Ah. Ako, laging sa Terraform website lang. Napaka-complete. And sa YouTube, marami tutorial. Maraming gumagawa ng mga projects related to Terraform. So, kunyari, gusto mo static website, punta ka lang sa YouTube. Meron, meron yan. Exact. Uh, parang depende sa usage mo. Marami nang gumagawa. And um, laging may up, pag may updates, mi, minsan kasi nag upgrade ng version ng Terraform every time merong bagong service silang sinusupport. Um, I think one example I can provide is yung dati, for example, nag-provision ka ng EC2. Wala pa siya nung predictive scaling na part. So yung configuration na yun is introduced in a later part, in a later version of Terraform. So, Meron din concept sa Terraform na versions. So kapag uh, minimum version should be applied kapag meron kang ginamit na particular configuration dun sa infrastructure na din deploy mo na not available dun sa previous version. So meron siyang ganong concept. But uh, basically sa resources kompleto na sa HashiCorp uh, website ng Terraform. Okay, cool. Ito personal question ko ulit. Um Meron bang restriction kung ano ang pwede mong i-host sa static website mo using AWS? Ano ulit? Paulit, sorry. Kung merong restriction sa content, say, I, I want to host uh, pirated stuff. Ah. So download, pwede ba yun? Um, hindi ako masyado familiar kung ano <laughs> Pero I think baka ma-flag ka ni AWS, baka ma-flag yung account mo. kapag Hindi ko alam kung meron silang way to detect that. Okay. Pero hindi natin siya inaano, pina-promote. <laughs> so, kasi 'di ba, no, nung nauusap eh, nung hindi pa uso yung mga dynamic websites, 'di ba, yung mga static websites. Eh, ako ko inubutan niyo. Kami ni Sir Willie nabutan namin 'yon. <laughs> Tao dito. 'Yon. Those were the days na uso yung MP3. So you upload the MP3s to your to your uh, to your website so that kahit sang gagamit ng computer, <laughs> na computer shop, pwede mo i-download and you know where to go. <laughs> Oh, ah. Ayun, ayun, sabi ni Sir Willie. <laughs> Dati Sir, oh, ayun. Hindi ka naman na flag. <laughs> um, depende sa host. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pero if you own the server, parang di ba, wala sila magagawa. So it's like, ang um, difference na siguro now with AWS is that you technically own the virtual server, kaya lang, it's hosted by AWS. So okay. nung time kasi na yun, parang, and you don't use a a top-level domain para hindi makaroll ni Google sa ating Yahoo. So, gamit, mas mahabang subdomain, mas maganda. <laughs> okay. So, subdomain, yun, yun ang labanan dati. Na, yun, yun yung time ng MP3. Tapos, nung dumating yung iPad, wala, namatay na MP3. Okay. So, wala, wala, wala ng challenge. Okay. Uh, ano pa ba? Sino pa may katanungan? Sa YouTube, sa Facebook, wala. Walang tahimik sila sa Facebook. Sino pa dito sa loob ng Zoom ang may tanong kay Kay? Bago natin bitawan si Kay. 
baka gusto may promote yung grupo niyo kay what what do you do? Uh, yep uh, we have a facebook page yung awsug builders plus so ang focus ng group namin is yun nga like i said earlier for diversity and inclusion we focus mainly on women tapos yung lgbt plus community but also men are also welcome minsan kasi nag host kami ng events na hihiya yung lalaki kasi uh, mostly girls yung umaattend So we're also we also welcome men to attend. Um, we uh, we host tutorials every quarter for yung mga nagtitik ng EWS certifications. That's for free every Sunday. Sha. Um, wala recently eh, pero baka mag-announce kami soon. Um, mag anniversary na rin kasi kami this year. Uh, this this month. Ayan. Awesome, so, awesome. Actually, okay. sumali ako dun dati eh, kay Rafi naman tuwing Sunday. Mm-hmm. Eh. Uh, uh-huh. Hindi pa yung papa-certify ng ayan. Malapit na, malapit na. Um, uh, may question from Facebook uh, si Wesley. Uh, what is the difference when using GitHub Actions and using AWS Code Pipeline? Or the pros and uh, what are the pros and cons between the two? Ah, uh, ayun, same range siya actually. <laughs> Wala siyang difference. Same ano lang siya, depende sa preference mo. Actually, may isa pang option yung Jenkins. Ganun din yung purpose niya. You can also use that to uh, automatically provision depending on uh, trigger. So, parang ano lang siya, different brand. <laughs> kung baga, kung saan ka mas, uh, ano, mas gamay, mas sanay, di ba? Uh, yeah. To each is his own. Uh, so, what, what else? Sino pa may tanong para bago natin pakawalan si Kay? So, is this something that you do uh, on a daily basis with with your work? Yep. Uh, especially for for DevOps, um, hindi talaga programming ang focus, but rather yung pipelines or infrastructure deployment and maintenance. So, um, mostly talaga ikaw yung nagbi-build up ng infrastructure, tapos yung developers yung gumagawa ng code part. Ganun. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Uh, wala nang tanong, going once. Let me check sa Facebook. Baka meron pa nagtanong. Okay. Wala. Okay, so wala na? Wala na? Uh, saan ka nila pwedeng makontact if ever? Or uh, what what's your GitHub page again? Uh, that's Coder K. Coder K. Yep. K with an E. K-A-Y-E, yes. Okay, K-A-Y-E. Okay, so doon pwede ka ba nila i-message if they have questions or they will yep. just leave uh, comments on your uh, codes? Yep, also in LinkedIn or kahit sa Facebook. Active naman ako sa any social media. Ayun. Okay, yun. Samantalahin nyo na if you have questions. Ato, may, may pahabol pang tanong. Uh, iba, iba po yung work nyo sa solutions architect. Uh, I'm not sure. Joffrey, sabi niya is, iba po yung work nyo sa solutions architect. Or maybe, ano ba yung solutions architect na tinatawag? I believe yung solutions architect, sila yung nagde-design nung architecture. So, Um, pwede mag-overlap. Usually kapag lead lead role ka for DevOps, may pagka-solutions architect na rin kasi ikaw na rin yung nag uh, gumagawa ng architecture, nagde-design ng architecture. Pero um, some teams can have separate solutions architect and a DevOps engineer. Ganun. Pero and, yan, overlapping yeah. nga yung and, and you hold four certifications, no? AWS? Apo. <laughs> <laughs> Ayan, kasi ano... Um, yung AWS user group laging nagsusponsor. Actually, this July, until July 31, meron pang binibigay na free vouchers for certification yung um, AWS user group. So, if you want. Ako kasi yung two recent certifications ko is nakuha ko through the user group. Parang pin-provide free. You just have to be active with the um, activities provided by AWS Club or AWS user group. Tapos, mm-hmm. just email Sir Rafi. Yun. Yeah, ako ako rin member ako ng ano ng AWS user group. Uh, I I took the Sundays training. I think that's a whole month. Ang aim is parang uh, tapos ka na yung aking ano AWS Cloud Practitioner certification. So, malapit na, malapit na. So, yun uh, uh, until tomorrow I think nga yung free voucher and then you have I think a month to take the to schedule the, cert- the certification exam. Yep, and yep. kagandahan ngayon is pwede ka mag-exam sa bahay, no? Mm, yes. Nasubukan mo na? 
mag-exam. Medyo ano eh, medyo matrabaho yung gagawin kasi may mga restrictions like bawal may pumasok dun sa room and bawal yung may mga extra monitors ka. Parang i-video mo yung whole room mo. So, mm-hmm. ako usually sa test center talaga ako nagtatry. Ah, Pero, okay. madali rin daw sa bahay. Kung basta meron kang ano, tahimik na place. Saka stable yung internet connection mo. <laughs> Ayun. Eh, gusto kong subukan eh. Okay. One of these days. Okay. Maraming salamat kay uh, sa ano sa pagkakataon na binigay mo sa amin uh, to be our resource speaker for tonight's meetup. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Okay. So ulitin na. Ah. Sure po. <laughs> okay. So again, for, for those who are joining us tonight, uh, either on Zoom or by our Facebook live stream, um, if you have feedback, okay, we, we value your feedback, uh, just scan this code or you go to go.edukasyon.ph uh, slash Mozilla July feedback. Okay? Uh, let us know uh, your thoughts, uh, your suggestions on what, if we, are go- if we should continue something like this. Oh, alam namin nagustuhan niya naman yung topic ngayon. So, this is one of the ano ah, one of the sessions na marami kaming ano uh, attendees sa Zoom. Normally online lang marami. Ah, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, reminder ni Ems, make sure to answer the feedback form and eh, to, to get your e-certificates. Cool, awesome. And also the links uh, will also post the will update the live stream with the details including the links uh, provided by Kay. Uh, and also we'll we'll be uploading the recording of this on our YouTube channel. So yon, maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Uh, ingat kayo, nasa man kayo sa mundo ngayon. Um, kanina si isa nating participant is from Canada, okay? So maga doon. Uh, kung nasa Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao or nasang lupalop kayo sa planeta, maraming salamat for tuning in. And this is Bob Reyes of the Mozilla Philippines Community. Maraming salamat K, maraming salamat Ems and to the AWC Club uh partners for this awesome meetup. Maraming salamat sa Maten. Ingat kayo and magandang gabi.